Hello, my name is Mahmoud Salam. I'm a surgical trainee in West of Scotland Deanery. Today, I'm presenting our review of wedge resection versus segmental resection in management of complicated Mikkels diverticulum. Mikkels diverticulum is known to be the commonest congenital anomaly of the gastrointestinal tract. However, it's still rare to be diagnosed in adults. Currently, there is no agreement on what type of resection that should be performed for symptomatic Mikkels diverticulum, also whether to resect or not an incidentally discovered Mikkels diverticulum. Due to the rarity of this condition in adults, we are reviewing various presentations of Mikkels diverticulum and their subsequent surgical management. Mikkels diverticulum was first described by the German anatomist Johann Meckel. It is the remain of the yolk sac. As we know, the yolk sac of the developing embryo is connected to the primitive gut by the vital line or omphalomesenteric duct. This vital line duct usually regresses by the seventh week of fetal life. However, if this regression fails, Various abnormalities may occur, and Michael's diverticulum is known to be the most important of these anomalies. Michael's diverticulum is known by the rule of twos, as it occurs in 2% of the population, presents before the age of two, located within two feet of the aleocecal valve, measures two inches long, and it contains two types of ectopic mucosa, which are the gastric and the pancreatic tissues mainly. Located on the antimesenteric border of the allium, and it is a true diverticulum, which means it consists of all the three layers of the small bowel wall. It has its own blood supply from the superior mesenteric artery, and this in particular makes it vulnerable to obstruction and infection like the appendix. A person with Michaels diverticulum has from 4 to 6% risk of developing complications. Common presentations of complications in adults are bowel obstruction, which happens in more than 36% of the patients, intussusception, diverticulitis and perforation, bleeding, and tumors. Hemorrhage is known to be the most common presentation in young children while bowel obstruction is the commonest among adults. However, complications have been found to be more common in males. Generally speaking, the type of surgical resection for symptomatic or complicated Michaels diverticulum depends on two factors. Firstly, the integrity of the diverticular base and the adjacent allium. Secondly, the presence and the location of the ectopic tissue. It is found that in 62% of patients with Michaels diverticulum, the presence of ectopic tissue cannot be assessed intraoperatively by either palpation of the diverticulum or by the gross appearance. However, the ectopic tissues can be predicted based on the height to diameter ratio. In long diverticular, which have height to diameter ratio more than two, tend to have ectopic tissue at the body and the tip, while in short diverticular, with height to diameter ratio less than two, tend to have wide distribution of the ectopic tissue, including the base. Regarding bowel obstruction in Michaels diverticulum, it is the most common presentation in adult patients, while it is the second most common presentation in children. The mechanism of bowel obstruction includes volvulus of small bowel around the fibrous band extending from the Michaels diverticulum to the umbilicus, or by intussusception, whether allu-allier or allucolic intussusception. It is maybe due to Litter's hernia incarceration, which is herniation of Michaels diverticulum causing inguinal or femoral hernia. It may be secondary to entrapment of small bowel 
beneath the mesodiverticular band. Other causes may include structure, tumors, and enterolus. The surgical intervention of bowel obstruction in case of Michel's diverticulum aims to resect the diverticulum itself by either wedge or segmental resection alongside correction of the associated pathology. If the obstruction is due to a volvulus around a fibrous band, we should perform untwisting of the bowel and division of the band which caused the problem. If the cause is intersusception, then we should reduce the mass as a whole and perform primary resection anastomosis. If the cause is herniation, then we should reduce the hernia, resect the diverticulum, and repair the hernia only after the resection is done. If the cause is mesodiverticular band, then we should reduce the small bowel, which is entrapped up to under the band, and resect the diverticulum with its blood supply. If the cause is enteroleth, then we should resect the diverticulum in block and perform primary resection anastomosis. Up to 50% of children with symptomatic Michels diverticulum would present with lower GI bleeding. Also, bleeding may occur in adults. It is usually painless and it may range from mild to severe bleeding, which may result in bright red, brick red, or black stool. Causes of bleeding Michels diverticulum include presence of ectopic gastric tissue secreting hydrochloric acid, ectopic pancreatic tissue secreting alkaline secretions, infection by H. pylori, or by tumors, which is mainly found in adults. The diagnosis of bleeding Michel diverticulum is done by mainly two methods. Firstly, by radioisotope scanning using technetium bertechnitate, which is considered the investigation of a choice in suspecting bleeding Michel diverticulum. The second option would be angiography, which is useful in localization of the site of the bleeding and to find the specific diagnosis. The aim of surgical resection in this case is to excise all the ectopic gastric tissue and any ulcerated adjacent allium, and this is to prevent recurrent episodes of bleeding. Wedge resection is preferred when a narrow base with no masses are found in the diverticulum, while segmental resection is preferred when there is a wide base or a palpable mass within the diverticulum or it signs of inflammation. On the other hand, diverticulitis of Michels diverticulum represent 12.7% of the symptomatic Michels diverticulum and it is common in adult patients. Diverticulitis with perforation occur at a combined rate of up to 7.3%. The preoperative diagnosis of diverticulitis is rare, but its manifestation is similar to that of acute appendicitis. Therefore, during appendicectomy, if the appendix was found to be normal, then exploration of the terminal allium is essential to rule out complicated Michels diverticulum. However, the detection of Michels diverticulum intraoperatively is rare, with an incidence of 2.4%. Surgical management of inflamed Michels diverticulum depends upon the degree of the inflammation. If it's simple diverticulitis, then we should perform diverticulectomy for long Michels diverticulum and wedge resection for short diverticulum. If it's complicated diverticulitis, then we should perform wedge or segmental resection of the diverticulum. If perforation is present, a through peritoneal lavage is done. Tumors of Michels diverticulum are very rare and occur only in 3.2%
of complicated cases. The tumor may be benign, which includes lipomas, neuromuscular and vascular hamartomas. Malignant tumors, which includes carcinoids, which are the most common tumor occurring in 44% of cases. Other tumors include mesenchymal tumors, adenocarcinomas, and dysmoblastic small round cell tumors. Lipomas of Meckel's diverticulum can be managed by diverticulectomy. Carcinoid tumors, if they are single, localized, and small, they can be managed by either diverticulectomy or segmental resection, while larger or multiple carcinoid tumors should be managed by segmental resection of the bowel with its mesentery, with or without hepatic resection for metastatic disease. Incidentally discovered Michel's diverticulum, the routine resection is not indicated. However, resection itself is not associated with increased morbidity and mortality. Therefore, decision-making should be based on certain risk factors like young age, less than 50 years, male sex, diverticulum length more than two centimeter, and presence of ectopic tissues or abnormal features within the diverticulum. It is recommended to resect all incidentally discovered Michel's diverticulum that fulfill any of these four criteria, as there is higher risk of developing future complications. The resection should be in the form of diverticulectomy if long Michel's diverticulum or wedge resection in short Michel's diverticulum. In a nutshell, Michel's diverticulum is the most common congenital anomaly of the GI tract. Lifetime risk of developing complications in this organ is up to 6%. The diagnosis of symptomatic Michel's diverticulum needs high degree of suspicion. The type of the procedure to be performed depends on two factors. Firstly, the integrity of the diverticular base and adjacent allium. Secondly, the presence and location of ectopic tissue within the diverticulum. In incidentally discovered Michel's diverticulum, routine resection is not indicated, but decision-making should be based on risk factors for developing future complications. Thank you.